Hi guys, so recently I bought some uh, some rocks at a local club sale, um, specifically these two, and um, this was labeled as Vonson Blue Jade, and this was not labeled, but someone told me it was a piece of a uh, uh, Big Sur Jade. So I was curious to find out if they actually are uh, jade. Um, so they're Two common tests that one can apply to determine if something is jade. So one is a scratch test to test what hardness, and another one is a specific gravity test. So today I'd like to uh, talk about how to do a specific gravity test, and it will check the specific gravities of these two pieces of rock to see what uh, what they are. So first, as a, as an introduction, I'd like to explain how to do a specific gravity test. Um, it's quite simple. All you need is uh, a scale, a tub of water, some tape, the rock you want to test, um, a sheet of paper to record record numbers on, and a calculator. In this case, I'm going to be using my phone. Okay, so, um, and what you do is, for reference, we're going to take an actual piece of a known nephrite, this is, uh, known to be nephrite, and we're going to try it out. So first, what we're going to do is we're just going to weigh all the pieces to get their their uh, their weights. Okay, it's quite dusty here. I think the units are. I'm going to work in grams. Okay, so that's now in grams. So we're just going to start recording. Um, the weight here is so for this piece of jade is 93 grams. Okay, so we're gonna try to do this uh, specific gravity test on five pieces of material um, with the jade and agates, really for uh, for comparison to show that we are getting reasonable numbers. Now this one is actually a piece of uh, somewhat mysterious uh, material that I acquired some time ago. I think it's Vesuvianite, but I'm not really sure. It does look like, you know, like, uh, um, what do they call it locally in California? Happy Camp Jade? I think it's, uh, I think it's that material. So let's also do a, a specific gravity test for it. So this one is 54 grams. Now for this, uh, I want some blue jade. It's 31. And and for this piece of uh, rock, it's 220 grams. All right. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put this tub of water on the scale, hit tear, so it zeroes. And then we're going to lower the rock carefully into the water without touching the side. So that's key. You're going to make sure it doesn't touch the sides or your readings will be off. Okay, so what I do is I just wrap a piece of tape around the rock, right, to hold it. Okay, you can't use your hands. If you do it, then um, you'll change the readings because your hand will be in the water or your fingers will be in the water. So here, you see me, I'm lowering this piece of jade into the water. It's suspended in water, not touching the sides or the bottom. And when it's in the water, you take a reading, reading off of the scale. It's uh, fluctuating a little bit because the jade is shaking around, but it seems to be about 30 or 31. Okay, 30. I think that's where it finally decided to end that. So we're going to write down 30 grams for this one. Now for this piece of agate, it's a blue lace agate reference material. So let's do it. Oh, sometimes you might see that the, uh, the zeroing is off right now. It's reading two, so I got to hit tear again to make sure it zeroes. Okay, here we go. In the water. 35. Okay. Here. For 
this possible Vesuvianite. Seventeen. Swanson blue jade. Ten. If you have a more accurate scale that produces uh, decimal points, then you get a more accurate reading. So, obviously, because it's a rather coarse grain scale here, we're going to have um, maybe a, a bit of a somewhat largish confidence in interval. But by and large, I think it's going to allow us to make some conclusions. So this one's coming in at four, 74. Okay. So... Now to calculate the specific gravity, you're just going to take the first number, divide, and divide that by the second number. So for the 93, for the first one, for the piece of jade is 93 divided by, divided by 30, and that's 3.1. And for the second one, 92 divided by 35. 2.63 54 divided by 17 it's the Vesuvianite is 3.17 sorry 18 rounding off Fonson Blue J 31 divided by 10 3.1 and the Jade 22 0 divided by 74, 2.97. Okay. So, nephrite is uh, known to have specific gravity ranging from about 2.9 to, I think it's uh, 3.2. So, you know, I would say that checks out as expected. Agate, um, I believe it's uh, in, that, in the right range as well. 2.6, 2.7-ish, that checks out. Vesuvianite, um, I looked it up, I think it's supposed to be on the order of 3.3. So this is a little bit on the low side. So question mark there. So I'm still not sure what that is. If you guys know, let me know in the comments. Uh, the Vonson Blue Jade, if it's Jade, then you know 3.1 is in the right ballpark. Um, obviously, we have fairly low precision here. You know, one way to estimate a range is you could say, well, because the uh, the scale was uh, giving only integer answers, it could be as high as, you know, the maximum possible specific gravity might have been, you know, 30.5. Sorry, the minimum would have been 30.5. Oops. Divided by 10.5. So minimum, so it could have a range of 2.90 to a max of 31.5, which is the number just before it rounds off the 32, divide by 9.5. So it could be anywhere in the range of 2.9 to 3.3, which is, you know, the, the right range for jade. So yeah, maybe this really is jade. That's interesting. If you guys know if this, if this is how Vonson Blue Jade looks like, I really have no idea. Let me know. And as for this jade pebble, purported Big Sur jade pebble, 2.97, that's also in the uh, in the right range as well. So it could be jade. Um, but you know what? There's also the scratch test, right? And before I shot this video, I actually tested this uh, this jade pebble with a steel knife and I found that I was actually able to scratch it. So I think it's not actually hard enough to be jade, even though it's a uh, specific gravity appears to be in a, in a right ballpark. Mm -hmm. So if you've never done the scratch test with a steel knife, uh, what to look for is uh, something that's harder and can't be scratched by a steel knife. Um, when you try to scratch it, 
it leaves a, a gray streak, like a silver streak, because the the metal of the knife is actually uh, abrading and rubbing off on the on the on the rock. Um, so it leaves a silver streak. Whereas um, if if the if the material is softer, so that was for a harder uh, material, harder than steel. Uh, if, the, if the material is softer, then you you won't see that. You might see like a white scratch. That if you really inspect carefully, you might see a groove. Um, yeah, because you've actually managed to penetrate the the, the rock. So so that's what I saw. I saw a whitish scratch, and um, it was definitely not gray or silver. And yeah, so this is softer than steel. So I actually, yeah, I guess it might not be jade. It might be. Serpentine, possibly. Yeah. So, so that's it. So I hope you guys uh, found it informative as to how to measure specific gravity. So, I think it's really interesting how that specific gravity uh, measurement works, and I've always been really fascinated by it. Um, and I'm gonna try to explain it to you uh, in layman's terms. I'm not sure if it's the best explanation. Uh, if it isn't, feel free to let me know. Maybe you know a better one. Um, but here's how I always think about it. So the so remember that the uh, the calculation for the specific gravity of of of, uh, of a rock is um, the the weight of the rock divided by the weight of water of equal volume right okay so we noticed that when we did the measurement with a tub of water right here's the tub of the water that's the water and here's the scale you notice that when we lowered the rock on that tape into the water um, the rock um, would get lighter you can feel it in your hand. Uh, that's how you know everything is when you immerse them in water, they get lighter. So what's causing the rock to feel lighter is because the, the water is uh, exerting a buoyancy force upwards on the rock, right? So there's a buoyancy force that the water is exerting up on the rock. And you know, from this thing called Newton's third law, um, if the water is exerting a force on a rock, then the rock must be exerting an equal and opposite force on the water, which transmits through to the scale. That's the scale. And so the scale is now experiencing this additional weight. Remember, we teared it at zero, but because we lowered rock, the rock into the water, um, now the scale is experiencing this additional weight <clears throat> from the water pushing up on the rock, right? So, and, and that's the scale reading. So the buoyancy force that the water is pushing up in the rock um, is causing rock to push back with an equal and opposite force and it's equal to the buoyancy force, right? And that becomes the scale reading. Okay, the, so the buoyancy force experienced by the rock is equal to the scale reading. But, you know, we did a calculation by taking this the scale reading and and using it in the divisions. So the scale reading, somehow we're using it as the weight of the water of volume equal to rock. Now, why is that? Why is the scale reading equal to that? So it's interesting. So what's happening is, <clears throat> imagine that the rock got magically replaced by water that has exactly the same shape as the rock, right? Now, because we're in a, in a static situation here. The water is not circulating. It's not sloshing around. If water has magically replaced the rock, right, then the water must necessarily be experiencing a supporting force that can hold it up in the water that's equal to the weight of that, that water, okay? If, for instance, the, the, the force supporting this volume of water were, were, were less than its weight, Right then, um, we are, then the force will be inadequate to support that volume of water, and this volume of water would fall, and would create circulation in this tub. 
that there's, you know, we're in a static situation here, there's no circulation. So this water that's magically replaced a rock must necessarily be experiencing a force equal, a buoyancy force equal to its weight. Okay. And now imagine putting back in the rock. We have replaced that that water magically with a rock, right? Now we put the rock back in with magic. So do you think the water knows that we've just done that? Do you think the surrounding water knows that um, the water in here has been replaced magically with rock? No, it doesn't. I mean, water is not very intelligent. It doesn't know. So, it's, so it continues to support that rock with the same force. That's the nature of the, the water around that, that volume of space. It will support that volume of space with certain buoyancy force. It doesn't know what's in that volume of space. And so, so the rock, therefore, is experiencing the same buoyancy force as if the rock were composed of water. And so this buoyancy force experienced by the rock is exactly equal to the weight of, weight of water of equal volume, right? So the weight of water of equal volume is this buoyancy force that's experienced by, by the rock. And we, we showed just now that it's actually the scale reading. And that's why we can use the scale reading in the de denominator here in the calculation. So I hope that was um, somewhat semi-clear. Uh, if it was confusing, I apologize. Let me know. Uh, but I find it very fascinating how this works. I think it's called the Archimedes Principle. Yeah, hopefully this was interesting to you, and I'll see you next time.